Before we get started sewing, we need to select our stitch. So we're gonna use the stitch selector dial. You can see all the different stitches that are included on your machine on this dial. When you turn the dial, you'll feel a click. And when it clicks, a set of stitches lines up underneath this marking on your machine. I wanna do a straight stitch. So I'm gonna turn back to our straight stitch. You'll notice there are three different stitches at my marking here. So how do I know which one I'm gonna sew out? We'll select the stitch that we wanna sew using our stitch length dial. So for example, the gray one here, we'll use one of the gray numbers up here in our stitch length. For a blue stitch, we're gonna turn our stitch length dial to the blue. And for the red stitch, we'll turn our dial to the red. So I wanna do just a regular straight stitch. So I'm gonna turn my dial back to the stitch length in the gray zone here. And I'm gonna go for an, an average everyday number of two and a half. So now let's try it. I've got some scrap fabric here and I'm just gonna put this under our presser foot. And now from the back, we're gonna lower our presser foot down onto our fabric. Now we get to use our foot control and you wanna just press down on your foot control to start sewing. When we're at the end of our fabric, we need to lift our presser foot and then you can take your fabric over to the side of your machine where there's a cutter. After we finish cutting our thread, we can take a closer look at our sample stitch that we've sewn to see if we've threaded our machine properly. So I'm gonna look at both sides and both sides look just fine. I've got a sample here for when a machine wasn't threaded properly. So the top of it looks just fine. On the bottom, the thread looks a little messy and there's a bunch of loops. So even though this is the bottom of my thread, it's an indication that it's not the bobbin, but it's our upper thread that needs to be re-threaded. So you can always go back to your quick start guide or your cheat sheet and re-thread your machine. My stitch selection dial is still set to our straight stitch and I've grabbed some of my project fabric. So now I'm gonna look at my stitch plate that's underneath our presser foot and you'll see the series of lines. I'm gonna look for the 5 8 inch line because that's what my project calls for, is a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna line my fabric up with that 5 8 inch seam allowance line underneath the presser foot and then I'm gonna reach around and lower our presser foot using the presser foot lifter. I'm gonna step on our foot control and I'm gonna go about three or four stitches and I'm going to push down on our reverse lever and go back over those same three or four stitches. I'm gonna release the lever and then continue sewing my straight stitch. Remember not to push or pull your fabric. All you need to do is guide it. When we get to the end, I'm going to push down on our reverse lever again, go back three or four stitches, and then let the stitch finish. If your needle happens to be down in your fabric, you can always raise it by turning the hand wheel towards yourself. Now we need to raise our presser foot using the lifter on the back and we'll take our fabric to the side and using our cutter, we'll cut our thread. And we did the reverse stitches at the beginning and the end of our seam to make sure that our project doesn't unravel. We just finished sewing a seam using the seam allowance markings on our stitch plate. When you're just starting out sewing, sometimes that can be a little difficult to keep our seams perfectly straight by just using those markings. With your machine, you get this so easy foot. And this foot is awesome because it helps us guide our fabric and keep our seams straight. This acts as a physical edge for our fabric. So now we can keep that nice straight stitch. And you can see the markings on here show the different seam allowances. So we can just move those to whatever we need for our project. Now let me show you how to change the presser foot. 
Gently hold your foot from the front and the back and press forward and it'll snap out of this groove. Now we can remove the foot and then taking our so easy foot, we can line the small metal bar here with the groove on our ankle. So we can line this up and then we'll just gently push back and snap into place. And now our foot is ready for use. Now let's set our guide to 5 8 inch seam allowance. We can take some fabric and we can butt that up against the guide of your foot. And then we'll lower our presser foot down. And so now you'll see the fabric goes up against the edge of this guide and this will help allow us to keep our seam straight. So let's press down on our foot control for a straight stitch. And now you know why we named this foot the So Easy Foot. <laughs> so now we need to raise our presser foot, but also we need to raise our needle using our hand wheel toward ourselves. And we'll take our fabric and go to the side. And now you see how easy it was to keep our seams straight. Now we're gonna try some of your other stitches. We're gonna use our stitch selection dial and I'm gonna to turn to our multi zigzag stitch. And you'll notice there are three stitches here. The multi zigzag is our gray stitch. So I'm gonna to go to my stitch length dial to set the stitch length to two. So let's see how that looks. We'll put our fabric under our presser foot and then we lower our presser foot from the back and we press on our foot control. guiding our fabric and not pushing or pulling. I'm gonna raise our needle, lift our presser foot, and take the thread over to the side and use the cutter to cut our thread. And now we can see our zigzag. Now let's try our blue stitch, which is our honeycomb stitch. To do that, we go up to our stitch length dial and we turn to the blue. And now we can stitch out a honeycomb stitch. Place your fabric under your presser foot, lower your presser foot, and then press on your foot control. Raise our needle, raise our presser foot, and then we can cut our thread on the side. Now we can look at our beautiful honeycomb stitch. So now let's select our red stitch, which is the feather stitch. We're gonna go back up to our stitch length dial and turn to red. Let's stitch that out. Lower our presser foot with our fabric underneath, and we'll press our pedal down. Raise our needle, raise our presser foot, and then cut our thread. And now we have our feather stitch. So we have three different stitches, and all we had to do was change our stitch length dial. Now let's make a buttonhole. 